guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hassa Slayman for those of you who don't know me. And in today's video, I am super duper excited. If you have ever been on placement and a doctor told you, grab a clinical history from this patient and you had no idea what to do, even if you had a little bit of an idea what to do, this video is exactly right for you. So basically, in second year of my medical training, so essentially last year, that's when we were first exposed to clinical patients. In first year, they taught us how to take a medical history, but it's not the same as taking a history from a patient in real life. Basically, before going to placement, I made this clinical history sheet. So I'm gonna show you from my iPad here, which by the way, I will share with you. So basically I've got Notability. So on my Notability app, I made a sample clinical history sheet. And it's basically got everything that you want to know about a patient. And the idea of this sample clinical history sheet was to go through the questions systematically with a patient. And the idea is if I do it enough times, I will remember how to do it as if there wasn't anything to prompt me to ask the patient those questions. So we're gonna do this with a sample patient. And as I mentioned before, I'm gonna give you guys the link. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit more about the sheet. So you've got the date. It's always important to know the date because like if a patient was admitted today, you wanna know when you've taken this clinical history. Um, I've got that sign for the gender. Um, it can be male or female. It's a different sign for females, as you know. Um, you write down the age, name, uh, DOB's date of birth, and then you've got quick facts. So something like, um, something interesting about the patient. Say if the patient goes like, I was a diver, you go like a diver. And this also makes it easy to present the case. Then you've got presenting complaint. And basically if I come into the hospital today and go like, I've got a tummy ache, that's your presenting complaint. The history of presenting complaint, I've got a little side note on the side. Socrates, so site, onset, character, radiation, associated symptoms, exacerbations, timing, and severity. So we're gonna go into this step by step. So let's take this stomach ache example. So say I've got a tummy ache and it is in the lower right quadrant, okay? You've got a pain that's in your lower right quadrant and I go like, onset, when did it start? So it started yesterday. Character, so I could be like, oh, like, you know, it comes and goes. Or I could be like, it's sharp. I could be like, it's um, not so sharp. It's, it's a dull ache. You could say it's crushing if it's a heart attack and like usually patients de describe it as crushing ache. So different ways of describing an ache can also help you identify what it is. Then you could go into radiation. So say uh, with patients who have a heart attack, sometimes it can radiate down their arm. So you, they could be like, oh, like I, I felt pain going down my arm and on my left jaw. Associated features. If you take the heart attack example, it could be something like sweating. And then timing is for how long did it last? Was it less than 20 minutes? Was it greater than 20 minutes? Um, sometimes when it's less than 20 minutes, it indicates angina. So timing is also important. And then severity is different based on the patient. So the severity is like 10 being the worst pain ever, one being a mild ache. So the patient can tell you how painful it is. And that also helps you identify like how the patient is feeling at that time. Then if you scroll down ideas and concerns, Basically what I've noticed, especially if you're in an exam situation, it's always good to smash out ideas, concerns, expectations. Just smash it out at the start because you know in what direction to go. So if a patient goes to you and this patient is, for instance, she has she is a young girl, she's got a stomach ache and she's concerned that she's pregnant, you know that this girl has come in because she's worried about the pregnancy. You know to go easy on her and to be mindful of her feelings. So you always have to keep that in mind when you're taking clinical history. Then we've got past medical history. Um, I've got a list of all the body systems. So it could be anything like, it could be something from hypertension, diabetes, cancer. It could literally be any condition ever. And then past surgical history. Once again, I've got it. It says divide into different systems. You've got medication history. So that's literally what medications the patient's taking. Um, and that's because some of the effects that patients can get is due to medication. 
so you know whether you want to taper it down, whether you want to change it at all. And all those letters on the side is an indication of like, um, basically in the clinic, you see a patient chart and like the medications that they give them in the hospital. And sometimes you've got terms like OD, BD, TDS, whatever. So I've got this to help me identify how often they're giving the medication to the patient. Allergies, always important, always ask allergies. You actually get a point for asking what allergies the patient has because it is so dangerous. If someone's allergic to penicillin, you can't give them any drugs that are related to penicillin. So it's always important to know that. Relevant legal info, I just, I just included this in the form, but I haven't needed to use it, but it basically indicates the power of attorney. So basically if anything happens to the patient, who else can you contact or who takes the decision for the patient? Then you've got family history. I'm a very visual person, so I've got this little family tree. Um, that's just an example, so I've got a, like a little arrow up there, so that shows me the patient, and I would color it in based on the condition, and I would write down exactly what's going on. Then you've got social history, and it's everything under the sun. I've got, um, I've got like what one pack year is because I always get confused with pack years and I've got everything that might be important or relevant to a patient. And then once you're done with that, if you're in a clinical situation, then you move on to your clinical exam and I've got diagrams once again, if you scroll down to show like if you're, if you're doing all the systems in a patient. So it starts with cardiovascular, resp, abdo, neurological, and it goes in order and it shows you like the little diagrams and the table. So you can fill that in and it's always good practice to do both on each patient so that you can learn from their different conditions, what they present with, etc. So we're gonna go with a sample so that I can show you how exactly it's used. I'm gonna go with a bright color so that you know what I'm doing. Um, and basically I've got the OSCEs uh, textbook with marking schemes. This is the textbook that I'm talking about. So we're gonna try the case from station number one. Um, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I fill in this sheet based on case number one. So this is a patient called Mr. Nasser Triagulu, and he's 53 years old. So Nasser, okay, so I want a bright color. We've got yellow. So I've got Mr. Nasser Triagulu. He is 53 years old. Okay, so we know that the patient is 53 years old. So he's an older patient. Um, and basically that helps you kind of think of different conditions because like there are some conditions that are more related to older patients and some that are more related to younger patients. So in this case, the patient presented with central chest pain while reading a magazine in the park. So that's your presenting complaint. Chest pain while reading magazine in the park. Okay. And then I'm gonna put down Socrates. Whenever there's pain, you know, you have to ask Socrates. And then based on the pain, so if it's like abdo pain, anything that's related to the abdominal system, so you have to ask about diarrhea, you have to ask about vomiting, you have to quantify it. But now we are gonna use this as a template for any history taking. So if you're ever lost in placement, you have some structure to go by. So we're gonna use this right now. So site, so he had a cent he had central pain. When did it start? It started today while he was reading the magazine in the park. And it was one hour ago. So we know that this is acute. So you have to think about acute conditions versus chronic conditions, completely different things, okay? Now we've got character. So it's just tightness in the chest. Do you feel like the pain goes anywhere? Does it radiate anywhere? He said it does not radiate. So I like doing this circle with a, because that means not, like there's nothing going on. And also it's really good because it's like a quick thing to draw. Any associated symptoms? He was not short of breath. There were no palpitations. Now the reason why I'm writing this down is because I think palpitations and shortness of breath is quite important. Because like, by the way we're going, it's chest pain. So chest pain, Think about all the systems that might, may be associated. You might get something like GERD because the esophagus is there. You could get something from the heart. You could get something from the lungs. So you start thinking about all those things that are associated. I don't think at this point in time, especially if I'm taking a focus history, that asking about vomiting or diarrhea is relevant. But 
We'll see how it goes. But at the moment, he says, there's no shortness of breath, no palpitations. I think it's always important to write down everything until you kind of identify what's important to write and not to write. And it also makes life easier if you're presenting to a doctor. So I'm gonna write down no shortness of breath and no palpitations. He did feel clammy though, but he did not faint. How long did this pain last? It lasted for seven minutes. He's still in pain right now, but it's dull. Still in pain, but dull. Anything that exacerbates your pain or relieves the pain. Back in the day, when he used to run to catch the bus or move, exercise, it used, he used to feel the pain. So pain during exercise or running to the bus. And before the GTN spray used to relieve his symptoms, it doesn't anymore. So no relief GTN. The severity he says is a seven out of a 10. Now you have to ask him, has this happened before? And then he tells you, yes, it has. It happened during rest while he was watching television. And that's another thing you have to ask. So like on set, he said it happened today, magazine reading a park one hour ago. You have to ask, were you, were you doing anything? Were you moving? Did any special positions trigger the pain? Or like when you breathe in, does it trigger the pain? You need to know what caused this pain. You're a detective right now. You want to find out what caused the pain. So as I mentioned, um, you're asking him, has this happened before? Yes, it has. So it happened when he was watching television. So at rest. And before this, it happened when running to catch a bus, which I've already written. But like back in the day, the GTN spray used to relieve the pain. Now, I don't know about you, but I've already got something in my mind, okay? So based on the symptoms that he's giving me, I'm thinking he has angina and he has angina at rest. And you have got to remember, so like the reason why we're doing this video is because 80% of your diagnosis is based off of a clinical history. And then everything you do afterwards is based on the clinical history that you took in the first place. So now we're thinking, okay, so this guy has angina and he's got angina at rest. So that means unstable angina. However, you need to eliminate some other things that may be a differential diagnosis so that you're even more sure that it's angina. So some other things, for example, that can cause this type of pain is if the person had a respiratory infection. So you ask, have you had, so you start asking systemic symptoms, right? That's the next thing to ask, systemic symptoms. Have you had a fever? And he goes like, no fever. So you know, I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm saying it's less likely going to be an infection. And then you're wondering, this is an older patient, right? What if he has heart failure? So I ask him, so you'd ask him, do you need pillows to prop yourself up when you're asleep? So that could indicate that he has fluid in his lungs because of his failing heart and he's struggling to breathe and pump his heart when he's completely flat. So he needs that bit of elevation. And he says, no, no paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Ideas are concerned. Um, so this is what I do, especially during exams. I'd weave it in differently if it's a patient right in front of me, but in exams I go like, do you have any ideas, concerns or expectations? Just bam, ice it and you're done. That's like classic ice, right? And then he goes, his dad passed away of a heart attack. So worried about a heart attack. Then this is the time to sign post if you're in exam. So you go like, okay, now I'm gonna ask about your past medical history. So do you have any conditions that I need to be aware of? So open-ended question. And then he goes like, oh, I've had angina in the past, which he's already mentioned. I have hypertension and I've got hypercholesterolemia. Then you ask, oh, like, do you have any other conditions? Do you have diabetes? Because that's quite common. And then you go at the different systems and you can, uh, you can also ask one by one because sometimes patients tend to forget. 
And then you ask, oh, like, have you had any uh, surgical history? And he goes like, no, I haven't had any surgeries. Then you go into medications. So he mentioned a GTN spray. So you go a GTN spray, how many puffs do you take? Or how many tablets do you take? When do you take the tablets? You need to ask all of those things. So he goes, GTN spray, two puffs, sublingual, as required, as you can see from this key. And you've got Simvastatin, 25 milligrams oral, aspirin, 75 uh, milligrams oral, once a day. Um, Bisoprolol, which is a beta blocker, 1.25 milligrams um, oral, once a day. And then Lisanopril, which is an ACE inhibitor, five milligrams oral, once a day. So you write all of those down and you write down the doses. Then you ask about allergies and he does not have an allergy. So you can do this or you can, no known allergies to AKA. Legal info, um, I mean, I just feel like he was talking to you about it. So I'm not gonna ask the relevant legal info at the moment. Um, next, I'm gonna go to family history. So with the family history, he mentioned that his father died of a heart attack. So I'm gonna color this in at 54. And then he also mentioned that his brother has undergone a cardiac bypass. So I'm just gonna draw the box, color it in, cardiac bypass. You know, he's got a strong family history of heart conditions. Next, you go to social history. So he mentions that he has smoked 20 cigarettes a day for the past 30 years. So 20 cigarettes for the past 30 years. I like writing everything down because at any point in time, you could make a mistake in the calculation. So you ask about alcohol. He only drinks alcohol socially, so shows social drinker. But then you ask him um, how much. And when you ask him how much, you go like, okay, so if you take a mug or you take a pint of beer, um, show me your glass size. Like there are many different techniques to quantify how much alcohol he's drinking. You ask about drugs. He says he doesn't do any drugs. And then you ask about the diet. He loves fatty fried food and he's got a sweet tooth, but he's been good in terms of exercise because of his heart. And surprisingly, I don't have exercise on here. I thought I did. So I guess here's a new thing to add, exercise. And I'm just gonna put a tick. And he says that he has a sedentary lifestyle. He is currently retired, so he just hangs out with his friends. So retired, does crossword puzzles. And hangs out with friends. This case doesn't talk about marriage or kids, but in a real life situation, you've got this list of questions here. You can ask about marriage, you can ask about housing, you can ask about kids. If the person has a disability, you can ask about their housing conditions. Um, or even if someone just came out of surgery for a hip replacement, you can ask about what their house is like. Is it gonna be really easy for them to integrate back in? Anyway, so this is how you go. If you have a focus history, for example, an abdominal history, and someone mentions vomiting, then you can ask things like, what's inside the vomit? Um, have you seen blood or, or bile? Have you, how much have you vomited? When did you vomit? What did you eat? You know, so there's so many different and like more questions that you'd ask. At the end of the day, you're a detective and you're trying to figure out what this person has. The diagnosis in this case is a unstable angina. One of the differentials obviously is an MI and it's a very strong differential. We crossed out heart attack. We crossed out um, a, a respiratory condition. And then because it's an unstable angina, you start thinking of like management. Okay, but first of all, you wanna confirm that this is an unstable angina. So you do troponin levels to confirm that the person does not have a heart attack. You do some other investigations. You can do an ECG, you do a chest X-ray, and then you move on to like morphine to relieve the pain, aspirin, analgesia. Like there's so much that you can do. Anyway. Guys, I hope this video helped you. As I mentioned before, I'm gonna keep this sheet a blank sheet for you so that you can use in your placement and you don't have to create one on your own. It will save you some time, hopefully. And if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe and share this video with your friends and I'll catch you next time.